so good to be here with you today. I know you weren't expecting this face to show up, probably, but uh, it's so good to be here. Um, Pastor Ryan, uh, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, it's really an honor to be with you. Um, I know your family a little bit, and uh, I went to school with Aaron Kuhn. And uh, if you, do you know who he is? <laughs> he must be famous here. Um, I heard he's the principal of your school, and uh, I'm shocked. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, I think he's going to be in the next service, is that right? Oh, we're going to have some fun. Okay, um, I went to school with him, uh, so if you need some stories, um, please let me know. Uh, I'm available. Uh, I would gladly hand out stories of Aaron. But uh, Pastor Ryan, thank you so much for having me uh, today. Uh, what, a, what a privilege to be here. Um, I've heard a lot about your church, and uh, last night I got to uh, talk with Pastor Ryan and uh, the former pastor and, and his wife, and uh, it was just an incredibly refreshing and edifying time to hear pastors who uh, really desire to make a difference in the kingdom and make disciples and, uh, and be all about God's mission. And uh, I do travel quite a bit to a lot of churches, and so uh, it was just really refreshing to hear that. And uh, I've been really looking forward to sharing with you this morning. Um, I have limited time this morning, so I want a uh, limited time of an hour. Is that right? Okay, thank you. Um, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, let's pray and we'll get to the word, okay? Oh God, we thank you so much for this morning. Uh, you're a good God. You're an awesome God. Lord, I pray right now that, that you touch our hearts and stir our hearts for you. Lord, we don't want to live this life uh, just to put food on the table, uh, although you provide all things. Uh, we know you have more for us uh, to participate in your glorious mission, uh, to be a part of what you're doing around the world. We want to be a part of that, Lord. And I pray that you give us meaning and purpose this morning and speak to our hearts. Lord God, I'm not worthy to stand here, but I pray that you would speak uh, through me and uh, help us to just uh, receive your word today. Uh, we love you, and uh, just be with us. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Would you turn your Bibles at this time to Matthew 28? We're going to read from verse 18 to verse 20. You, uh, you're very familiar with uh, this text, I'm sure. Um, it's the Great Commission text. Um, Matthew 18, verse I'm sorry, Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. Okay, we're going to be reading a couple of texts today, but I want to open with this text and, uh, and, and talk about this just for a moment, and then we'll get to the next text. Um, by the way, if I heard uh, one of our, a couple of our students are here. Um, I'm their homiletics or preaching professor. Don't do what I'm doing today. <laughs> Um, I'm going off a little bit of uh, traditional expository preaching, and so I was a little bit concerned about that. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20, it says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Okay. Um, uh, we're going to jump right back in the text in, here in a moment. But um, how many of you believe that God uses um, unlikely characters to continually to do his work? <laughs> Amen. And so um, I'm one of them. Uh, there's no reason for me to be president of a uh, university, especially one that makes disciples for the kingdom of God. And uh, when, believe it or not, when, when people come to our school, uh, when they don't check the website, uh, they see me, they usually walk right by me. <laughs> They're like, uh, our vice presidents actually look 
like presidents, you know what I mean? <laughs> a little bit older, a little bit more dignified. I, I just dress just like this at the school, and so they usually walk right by me. Uh, but I really uh, believe that God chooses the weak things of this world to do His work when He wants to demonstrate His power and His glory. And, uh, and each of us have our own stories of how God leads us and directs our path. Um, I want to share with you just a little bit about how kind of um, I got here and then we'll jump right back into the text. But um, most people are confused about what I am when they see me. Like, what is he? Okay, like, I see that he's Asian, but he doesn't sound like one. <laughs> okay, or uh, what, what in the world is this guy? And, and when, we, when we start talking, the confusion gets worse. Because um, I've literally been all over the place, and they can't figure me out. And uh, so I'm going to give you a little bit of glimpse into my life. Um, I actually grew up in Ghana, West Africa. Okay, and so can you imagine, right? <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> right? Uh, my parents are missionaries. So uh, we grew up in Ghana, West Africa, and we spent most of our time in West Africa. I actually lived in Europe for a little bit. And then um, eventually came to the U.S. Um, my parents are missionaries, church planters. And um, I spent most of my professional life uh, in Latin America. Okay? So think about that for a second, okay? West Africa, <laughs> Latin America. Okay? And so, <laughs> and, uh, and here in the States, I went to high school in the Northwest. Okay, so um, I'm not from the East Coast, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> right, and so um, people are really, really um, confused about me for many, many reasons. My wife is still confused about me, but that's okay, that's a whole other story, uh, but, but um, you know, and, and how many of you have planned all your life exactly how you want it to be? Yeah, I planned when I was born to be raised in Africa. Uh, I planned to go to high school in Washington State. Oh yeah, I decided to really uh, make plans to make sure I spent most of my adult life in Latin America doing work. Oh yeah, I, I planned all of those things. Um, but we know that um, God has an interesting way of uh, taking through us through life and experiences. Uh, each of us have a story, don't we? And if I were to t ask you your story, it would be very, very interesting and different, even if you grew up in the same town. Every single person uh, has a unique story uh, that God has put you through and is putting you through and will put you through. But I really believe that all of us and our stories and experiences, God desires to use it for His glory. It doesn't matter where you're born, it doesn't matter where you're raised, it doesn't matter what kind of experiences you've had, and it doesn't matter what things that you've gone through. God knows your life and is orchestrating your life to make sure that in His time and in His goodness and His purposes, to use you to be a part of His purpose. And today I want to talk to you just a little bit about His purpose and His mission. And uh, oftentimes when I talk about this stuff like this, usually people want to like, okay, President Kim, talk to me about my life. Okay, talk to me about what God has for me. Um, I realized quickly after marriage, about like five to six years, the world does not revolve around me. <laughs> I thought it did. <laughs> but... You know, I, I was raised in one of those families where my, uh, my, my uh, parents, like, thought the world of me. And uh, I was the center of the universe, you know what I mean? I was one of those. And, uh, and my wife quickly uh, shattered those dreams. <laughs> and uh, and uh, by the grace of God, I have learned that the universe doesn't circle around me, okay? But not only does the universe doesn't operate around my life, um, the history of the universe does not operate around my story. The history of the universe operates around God's story. The history of the universe operates on the basis of His history making and His plan 
God is a sovereign God who has a plan for this universe. Aren't you glad that we, have a, we serve a mighty God who has a, who, has a, who has a plan for this universe, who has a plan? And his heart and his plan is to redeem lost people that he created to be in relationship with him. And he has commissioned every single one of you and myself to be part of the Great Commission to reconcile lost people to himself because our Lord Jesus Christ has paid the ultimate price to bring the lost to himself, to forgive our sins, and to reconcile the separation between us and God through sin. And so we have this incredible command from God. And we have an opportunity to be a part of history making, not our own history making and not even your church's history making. This is not about this church or some other church. This is about God's story of his redemptive plan for the universe. And we get to be a part of that. Isn't that exciting? The God of the universe would, would call us who are not deserving of this kind of call to say, here's what I want you to do. Now, I think so oftentimes in churches, we often um, kind of have so many things that we're doing that uh, we're not very, very clear on what we're supposed to be doing. But after talking to Pastor Ryan yesterday, you guys are clear, okay? And, uh, and I'm very, very excited about that. But oftentimes when we're doing church, we make church about so many things, so many, including church growth, which is not in the Bible, actually. Um, growing your church is not biblical, okay? Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, but really what God wants to do uh, in and through this church and this body of Christ and through you is that God does have a command for us. And so if Jesus was returning and ascending to heaven after his death, resurrection, and ministering, and he gives a command, don't you want to know this command and make sure that you fulfill this command? I remember my dad uh, passing away in and when he was 58 from leukemia, from his deathbed, he told me a couple of things. I will never forget it. Uh, and he told me, there's some of them are too personal, so I'm not going to share here. But he said, David, you need to do this. I'll never forget those. Those are some of the last words that he spoke to me. And I'll ne I took it to heart. The king of the universe, after redeeming mankind through the his own blood, through the shedding of his own blood, to his disciples, he makes this commission and command. I think I would want to pay attention to make sure that my life is devoted to that cause because when this life is over, Jesus is going to ask me, isn't he? Hey, what did you do with this command? So that command is this verse. It says, and Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. What an incredible promise that he will be with us through and for fulfilling this command. Oftentimes in churches like ours, we focus on this verse on the go. Is that right? Okay. Um, hey, I, I think missionaries are incredible. They're in, an important part of uh, what, what God is doing. And, uh, but a lot of times I think, I feel like when missionaries come in and they're like, the whole time they, they quote this text and, and they focus on the go. And I'm like, ah, that's not the command, <laughs> okay? Um, that's part of the command, but that's not the command. Going is important. Going into your community going into foreign lands, going into cross-cultural setting, going into your workplace, going into your neighbor's house, all of these things are part of the Great Commission. Baptizing is part of the Great Commission. How many of you celebrate baptism here in this church? Isn't it incredible when lost people come to know the Lord and they're born again and they're testifying before God and to, and, and to the community of their surrender to God. It's an incredible thing. And it's okay to celebrate baptisms. 
we also, some churches are really focused on teaching, 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 which is wonderful, right? But when, when it's all said and done, when your life is over, God is not, Jesus is not going to come to you and ask, how many people did you baptize? Jesus is not going to ask, how did you go? Jesus is not going to ask, how many people did you teach? Jesus is not going to ask, hey, um, how many hours did you work? Okay, how many people did you, look, what Jesus is going to ask you, did you make disciples? The main verb in this text is make disciples. So going, baptizing, and teaching is what we call participles of the main verb. It's part of the main verb. And so if you ask me, what is the church all about? What is this all about? It's about making disciples. So if you thought that this is about your experience in the church, I have news for you. I'm sorry. Um, this is actually not about your experience. This is about being part of what God is doing and what God wants to do in reconciling lost people to himself and making disciples. And so we actually get to come to church, be built up, so that we can go out and make disciples. And so here's, here's something that, that I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's really important for us to understand, is that uh, oftentimes when we come into settings like this, we have many, many different agendas. How many of you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, uh, some of us, we want to move up to other leadership roles in the church. Some of us, we want to do certain things. Some of us, we just want to hear nice music. Okay, and some of us like, you know what I mean? And some of us like, Pastor Ryan, you're not funny enough today. Okay, I've never heard him preach, so I, I can say that. <laughs> okay, um, all right, uh, you know what I mean? Like everybody has different agendas for coming to church, but God has one agenda, and that agenda is to make disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, people who are in total surrender to the love of Christ. And here's what I want to tell you. Church, actually, I even don't like it sounds weird, okay? I don't mean I don't like the church. I don't like the nomenclature, the naming of even that word church in English because that word church in English doesn't do justice to the biblical word church because church actually comes from the Latin word basilica, which eventually gets translated into a German word called kirk, okay, that eventually became English word church. And I'm like, if you just study the root word of that, it's not really biblical. It's not a location, Basilica is an idea of location or place. That's not biblical concept of church. Church in the Bible is ecclesia. Ecclesia is the gathering of people, or another way we're putting it is congressing of people for a movement out with a purpose. I'm going to say this. It's the congressing of people, so they get built up with a focus, and it's a movement out for a purpose. It's actually, there is a reason why we get together, okay? And so church is a place where we come together, we get built up, we grow, we learn, we mature so that we can be part of the great commission of making disciples and seeing lost people come to know Jesus and to help them follow Jesus and to make disciples that will make other disciples, that's what church is. And so if we think that church, because if we think that church is a place where we come, it's for us and the church revolves around us and, and pastor, your sermon was okay, but yada, yada, yada. Or if you're the, the worship, so whatever, whatever your opinions may be, uh, we don't get the right to actually judge how the church is. Only God can. Amen. Okay. Even in worship, we don't get to say, hey, worship was great today. Only the one receiving the worship can say if that worship was good. Are you with me? Okay. So church doesn't revolve around us. The church is God's church. It's his body for a purpose to do his work. And let's look at the, the next text that I want to share with you. It's from Ephesians 4. Okay. Ephesians 4. We're going to read from 11 to 16 really quick, okay? So it says, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service 
so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14 says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Christ, right? Body, a mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Today is Pastor Appreciation Day, is that correct? Okay, let's give our pastors our appreciation. Um, you guys have some amazing pastors. We love them. I want to be very, very clear, and I know that past, I'm sure your pastor has spoke to, uh, spoken to you about this before, but I want to be very clear about some of the uh, categories of function, okay? We, we talked about here these equipping people. Equipping people are pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles, okay? Which means that they're not actually the doers of ministry, even though their ministry is equipping. So the actual doers of ministry is you who are sitting in the pews. So oftentimes there's, I know it's not in this church. I've actually, I do a lot of consulting and coaching of churches. I've had, I've had church leaders tell me, well, we pay tithe, we pay offering. How come they're not doing the job? <laughs> okay, like, how come they're not doing the ministry? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, um, let me tell you something, okay? I'm talking to you who's sitting in the pews. Maybe you've never, ever been a part of serving this body, but I want you to know that every single one of you, God has placed giftings, talents, wonderful things in your life to be able to contribute to the body of Christ so that your gifting may be used for the body of Christ so that you can help others be built up into the maturity of Christ so that we continue to be able to participate in the Great Commission. So pastors who are, you're appreciating today, their job is to actually come alongside of you and to help you reach your full potential in maximizing the gifts and talents and stewarding what God has given you for your workplace, for your home, for your community, and for your church. And so God has commissioned you for the Great Commission. The Great Commission is not just for the equipping pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles. The Great Commission is for you who are sitting in these pews. You're supposed to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. You're supposed to contribute to the body of Christ in the power and strength of God. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, you're supposed to exercise your gift in the church so that the entire body can experience the maturity in Christ. By the way, you can't mature as a body with just pastors and leaders ministering. Did you know that? Do you know that newcomers and people who are just coming to know Jesus cannot experience maturity in Christ without the exercise of your giftings, without you participating in the body of Christ? Isn't that crazy? Okay, that's what the body of Christ is all about. And, and here's what I want to say. There's a scripture that I really, really love. Um, and it says it, it says it in actually Ephesians 2.10. You can put it up really quick. Okay, Ephesians 2.10 says this. Um, it says, we, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Oh, my God. He not only saved us, but he has a plan for us to do good works to do ministry. You know the Ephesians 4 passage we read? It says the fivefold functions, they're supposed to equip the people of God for works of service. Let me translate that. For 
ministry. Okay? God has prepared ministry for you to do. We have this weird chasm of clergy and laity. Pastors do the ministry, we just serve. I have news for you. I believe in the priesthood of all believers, which means that you are the minister of the gospel. Did you hear me? You are the minister of the gospel. You're like, what, I'm a minister? Yes, you are. According to biblical terminology, Pastor Ryan is not the only minister in this church. Every single one of you are ministers and ambassadors of Christ. Yes, we can give it up for that. You're ministers of the gospel. You have a call on your life. Pastor Ryan's job is to equip you for ministry that God has called you, okay? Let's think about this for a second. This is for we are God's handiwork. I love that word. You know why? Because the English language cannot do the correct translation on that. Why? It's not that it's incorrect. It's, not, it's just not deep enough. How many of you read different translation that says we are God's craftsmanship, workmanship, masterpiece, handiwork. There's not enough words to describe the depth of that word. Do you know why? Because that root word in Greek is poemos. Poemos. It's the word, the origin of the word poetry, poem. That's where we get the word poem from, poemos. If you really dig deep into it, there's no other way to translate that other than we are God's artistry. Masterpiece, handiwork, craftsmanship, workmanship. For what? To participate in his purposes. What is his purpose? The Great Commission. To make disciples, to build a body of Christ, to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. God is commissioning each of you and every single talent, ability, spiritual gift, your experiences in life passion and heart that's in your heart that is not from you that is given to you from God by God for God's purposes and God wants to use your life for his purposes and God wants to do his amazing work in and through you amen, amen. this is God's plan for our lives um, when I, um, I'll tell you this story and I'll conclude here. Um, here's, here's what I want to share with you. Um, I, I've been a pastor uh, for a long, long time, um, even though I look young, right? Thank you. More blessings for you. Who actually thought about that. If you thought I was, a, I was old, less blessing for you, but that's okay. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I, I have an 18-year-old daughter. Okay. I have four kids. So... All right, you guessed the age, all right? And I went to school with Aaron, so you, you, you get it, right? So here's the thing. Um, I was doing um, ministry uh, in New York City, a pretty large place, and I'll make this story short. Um, and uh, I was in a large organization for many, many years, and, and um, I really thought I was doing ministry. And I didn't realize that um, I was living really for myself, for my own significance. And that God was taking me through a process of, of breaking. Uh, and one of the most important breaking moments of my life was when I was in a car accident uh, in 2013. I was doing business as missions in Ecuador. And uh, oncoming traffic swerved into our lane. And uh, my driver jerked right. And we hit the only tree in 45 miles on the side of the road. And uh, the pickup truck wrapped around that tree, and it only hit my side. And it crushed the right side of my face. And um, so I lost my right eye. And so this is not my real eye on the right. I have three screws on the side of my face. And um, as I was going through that, I lost everything. I lost my business. I lost, I lost everything. I had to return to the States with my family. And uh, I was trying to recover, and, um, and I needed to feed my family, and I wasn't fully recovered, and, and I was doing some consulting and staff work at some churches to put in their spiritual formation. And, and I remember sitting there um, stuffing bulletins because nobody would volunteer to help me. <laughs> I, 
I want you to know this context. Um, I was literally running Disney World in New York City. We were a global organization, okay? Just one location had 5,000 people. We had thousands of people everywhere. And uh, I used to lead projects and build schools. And here I was in a tiny little church in South Jersey stuffing bulletins after a car accident, okay? I was like, where did my life go wrong? Okay, and tears rolling down my eyes every night, asking God, what's happening to me? And, um, and the Lord spoke these words to me, and I'll never forget it. He said, David, am I enough for you? Am I enough for you? And I said to Jesus, I said, of course, you're enough for me. Jesus, you, you're the king of the universe, and you went to the cross for my sins, that I may have a new life. You're the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Of course, you are enough for me. And you know what he was communicating to me is that I love you. I have to be everything in your life in order to actually be able to serve me in his purposes. We can make even church and everything about our purposes. What God wants to do in your life is to reveal his beauty and his glory to you so you fall deeply in love with him. So when God calls you, you can actually surrender your life to his purposes of making disciples. All of your talents, all of your giftings. You might say, I don't have a lot. You know, I, I really, for me, here's, here's what I want to tell you. Um, I think we as church leaders have misled our congregation. Big things are not, big things of this world have kind of infiltrated the culture of the church. Do you know that God's not interested in big things? God's interested in you being faithful, what you've been given. And in God's eyes, that's greatness. That's greatness. Jesus paid it all. He's sufficient for you. And it's when God is inviting us to put our talents and our giftings and all that God has entrusted to us, he's saying, I have laid down my life for you so that I would be sufficient for you, that you're, you would never go thirsty with the living water that I have for you so that you can lay down your life for the work that I have prepared for you. You cannot do the work of God unless your heart has been satisfied by his love. Unless you have known that your significance has been satisfied with the love of Jesus Christ, you cannot do the work of God because if you, are, if you are not satisfied with the love of God, guess what? You're gonna actually use ministry for your own significance. You're going to actually use church for your own significance. You're going to use actually serving for your significance. Jesus has to answer that question of your significance and of your worth. That's why he laid down his life for you so that we can be reconciled to God. Amen? Amen. Because he satisfies us. Because he laid down his life for us. Now we can lay down our lives to say, Lord, use us for the work that you've prepared in advance for us to do. Could we stand real quick? Could you bow your heads? I know I'm out of time. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to take a, a minute or two. Okay. Maybe just the keys would be playing. As your heads are bowed, I want you to listen to me real quick. Um, Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you. He laid down his life for you. He loves you. And he's calling you to surrender your life to the cause of making disciples for his glory for his purposes, for the history that he is making. Not our own story, but God's story. And God wants to invite you to be a part of that. 
if in this moment God is speaking to you, God wants to enlist you in the body of Christ to serve his purpose. You can serve God in so many millions of various ways just where you are, in your home, in your community, in your workplace, in the church. God's not interested in just people on the stage. God's interested in the people of God shining for his glory. And so if this is you today and God is beckoning you to surrender your life to this cause, would you just open your hands in front of you in surrender and say, Lord, use my life. Use my life to make disciples. Use my life, whatever I have. I don't have much, but whatever you've given me, I want to surrender it to you. This is, just open your hands in front of you right now. And I want to pray for you. Lord God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace that you not only saved us through grace, you're changing us through your grace and you're going to use us through your grace. We need you, Lord God, to come in power by the Holy Spirit. As we surrender our lives to you, would you open doors for us? Would you place us in the right place at the right time? Maybe someone needs an encouragement. Someone needs correcting. Someone needs hospitality. Someone needs to hear the proclamation of the good news. Someone needs a serving today. Whatever it is, Lord God, that I have, I offer it to your purposes. Use me, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use this church. Lord God, I pray that this church would be sensitive to your spirit's leading that all throughout the day as they are abiding in your presence, oh God, that you would lead them and that you would show them how you're going to use what you have endowed them. Lord, as they surrender their lives to you, would you bless them? Bless them today, Lord. Bless them for your work. We thank you for calling us. We love you, Lord. We love you in this place. Use this incredible church to make disciples here in Dover and beyond and to the ends of the earth Lord God bless Pastor Ryan bless the leadership bless our pastors who are being appreciated today Lord God I pray that we would become one in this church Lord God to make disciples for your kingdom we love you we glorify you teach us how to do that in Jesus name I pray amen let's give the Lord a clap offering this morning